Exceptional employees find and solve exceptional problems and they earn exceptional reward. Like, what's hard? Like, I could do this in grade school, ladies and gentlemen. Like, it bothers me that some of you think, oh, really? Yes, really. And maybe some of you think, oh, you know that. But then you don't want to, me to ask you what you're doing about it. Hmm? It's, it's clear. It's straightforward. What do you want? That's what you have to do. So what we're going to talk about is how you find the exceptional uh, uh, problems. We're not going to show you how to solve them today. That's another presentation. A killer problem, it's the failure to solve the problem imperils the organization or the individual. But notice the second part of that line. Or the individual or person thinks it does. Because mission critical is not, is not necessarily life and death. Mission critical, and I know you engineers don't like this, is the perception of it between someone's ears. You want it to be some stress level that can be measured mathematically. And oddly enough, sometimes it is. But not always. Not always. And you want the need urgently felt. Read business books. They will tell you, you're supposed to solve your customer's pain point. They are wrong. That's the advice I would have given in 1985. Shall we not move on? The answer in today's world is, you've got to find not a pain point. You've got to find an excruciating pain point that makes your head feel like it's going to blow up. And then you appear with a solution and say, I can stop your head feeling from it's going to blow up. So here they are. Seven steps to great careers or great ventures in the charitable or commercial worlds, no matter the industry, no matter the technology. A handout is available at the end of this presentation that will describe everything we're doing, including some um, additional information that we don't have time to do. So you're going to get a handout where those seven steps are described in more detail. I, however, would like to sketch them briefly. We've talked about number one. Talk. Be social. Talk in person. Talk digitally. Talk semi-digitally. Don't look at me. You do talk semi-digitally. You must be, because you're both talking to your friend and texting at the same time. Like you're the friend, you're talking, you're looking in his face, and then you look down at your screen. All right, if you can do it, if that's parallel processing, I salute you. So long as what you're doing has problems that you're talking about with the person who's beside you and the person you're texting. Hmm? Number two, which you almost never do, drives me nuts. Let's see. You've got other things to do. You know, you need a life. Wait, you're Waterloo. Forget that. <laughs> but you have academic responsibilities. You have interviews to go to. You do need a little R&R. &R. You do have to sleep or you go squirrely. And somebody, yes. So wouldn't one way to find killer problems is to let somebody else do it for you, or to feed off their looking for problems. Let's see, it's so complicated. Who looks for pro who's paid to look for problems? And then, like a goof, tells you about them. Uh, journalists. <laughs> do you notice that? What's a journalist? That's their job. Go find problems. By the way, if you're a journalist, the better the problem you find, the more you will get promoted. Journalism is brutal business. Many of them are freelancers. So they will really live or die on the quality of the story they find. So they find these stories, they publish them, and you don't use it. You do not. Don't look at me. Don't you. Ah. <laughs> He's thinking, yes, I do. I ask Mother Google all the time about what's going on. Let's see. I'm going to find treasure by talking, by look asking the preeminent search engine on the planet. 
where one billion other people are looking at the same time. I'm going to find treasure there, right? Maybe not. Maybe, you see, you should use the serious business media. Look, fine, use blogs, fine, use a social media. No objection to it whatsoever. But why are you abstaining from the best educated, most carefully edited? The problem, of course, with much of the social media is it is corrupt. You are aware of that. Corrupt ads which pretend not to be ads. Crazy people with loud voices that preempt dialogue while the same person is shouted down. Hmm. In the established business media, more controls, fewer conflicts of interest, fewer self-dealing, fewer covert stuff, higher quality. And we give it to you on a silver platter, your tuition having paid for it, and you don't use it. I'm, of course, referring to the tool you'll find on the University of Waterloo library, you know, library, the building where the books are in, <laughs> that your tuition is paid for, password protected, that Mother Google cannot have because it's copyright protected, so Mother Google cannot have it. And you could go to it, and you could put in your employer's name, your workplace name, or you, could pu you put in a description of a problem in an instant, a few seconds. It will give you everything in much of the business media. And of course, you do it over time, because what you're looking for is a problem growing. More commentary, serious commentary, different journals, different publications. The language is getting more extreme. First, it was a problem. Then it becomes a pressing problem. Then three months later, it's a crisis. You are getting so excited. You have evidence. You have a killer problem. It's called, see, you're ripping my heart out now, because I'm looking at your faces. And I, if I was, don't, we're, we're not going to do this, because it would so depress me, I would like stop, and I'm never coming back. <laughs> But if we did, if we did, if I stopped now and said, okay, who knows what word I want you to say, if we had, we'll have a handful of people who know, and some of them are my former students who've taught, who I've told them about it, hmm? and it's Factiva. It's only one of the proprietary databases. But when you log on to Pro uh, Factiva, which of course you'll have to use your student ID card, in red it says, warning, warning, danger, danger, do not use this for commercial purposes. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not concerned because you don't use it for any purpose. <laughs> you could. Now you see, you can take what professional problem seekers are telling you are problems, and you can compare them to your workplace experiences of those of your colleagues. Can you not? Could you not? You could find out if maybe it's a bigger problem than even the journalist thinks, because it applies directly to your employer, and your employer seems oblivious to it. And you think, how could my employer be oblivious to the fact? that the Wall Street Journal has said that this industry is in radical disruption. And my employer hasn't changed a thing as far as I can see in three years. Whoa. Next work term there would be quite kick-ass, don't you think? <laughs> as you interrogate your workmates to try to find out what on earth is going on. Uh, so of course, given what you find in um, one and two, then you try to integrate it. You know, university, you know, your university students, on the great list of intellectual things, integrating diverse information is what you're supposed to know how to do. We admitted you because you gave us some indication you could do this. Now do it. Now do it. You are improving the quality of your information upon which you make these judgments. You're looking for treasure. And if you think a great career not a great venture, is a matter of luck, then get away from me. It's about work, discipline, and talent. And those are the key steps. Then, of course, independent of what you find in steps one, two, and three, you also pay attention to specifically looking for things. So in your workplace or in the workplace of your colleagues, you look for things which are very high cost. 
what in, the, in your employer's situation is very, very expensive? What do they tend to complain about? Or what just looks like a huge expense to you? Maybe it's something your employer is buying from an external source. I've now lost track of the number of student startups that use this brilliant strategy. They're at the workplace. Their employer is buying something expensive. They think, yo, that's ridiculous. I can make it way cheaper. Start a business, sell it to the employer, and then to all the other members of the industry. One business, I can give you a whole list of them. One comes to mind, cash positive in eight months, paying themselves professional salaries that they would have earned as a, in a like, regular job in 18 months. A decade later, 100 employees, not a nickel of debt, and no other investors, since they were such a cash machine that could fund themselves, because they did number four. Of course, look for repeated failures. What's, what keeps always failing in your organization? What keeps failing? Is it a service that fails? Some of you, it's like ridiculous. You're a co-op student, sometimes a regular student, and you're actually paid to fix something. Well, that's okay, you know, you're, you're the guy who fixes stuff. But then, you fix it again. But another one comes in, it's the you fix it the third time. Then you talk to a classmate and you discover that the person in your job before spent the whole term fixing things. And you think, what a stupid company. <laughs> no, I think, what a spaced out student who is being told, here's a killer idea. And instead of doing anything, I'd have had a nap. Hmm? Look for repeated failures. Now, of course, that's hard to do because most of you work in organizations which are perfect. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Don't giggle and then don't do it. Don't look look for the mistakes methodically. Look for the failures methodically. Uh, you look for customer problems. What is what are the customers of your employer complaining about? Get access to them. Get access to them. Ask for access to them. Former student. In this case, it's a career. He's got a career in private equity. Hard to get jobs in private equity, by the way. Makes great amounts of money and loves it. And loves it. Why? Because uh, he was the co-op who always asked about the customer. He was a humble coder. No, no, not a code monkey. No, no. We don't have code monkeys at Waterloo. We have software developers. <laughs> and that's what he was and always asked about the customer. And from that chain of simple questions, he got promoted as a co-op. Then he got transferred to Megacorp's marketing department. A young dude fascinated by customers. A young dude with a technical background, and everyone knows techies you know, can't cope with customers because they have to be showered every day and you know, speak coherently. So his fourth year was marketing assistant in Megacorp. And he got to tour the world representing his employer. Now what would real Waterloo student do? What he was doing was preparing himself for a killer job offer from that 4B employer. No, no, that thought out of your head, no. His employer's paying him to cruise the world promoting the company. And while promoting the company, what else did he do? Promoted himself. It was efficient. And that's why he now does his dream job. You also look for inefficiencies. You do that last. This is the order of likelihood, by the way, based on the experience of your predecessors in this place. Looking for inefficient things, looking for systemic problems, it's hard to sell them. Not impossible. It's easy to sell an overt failure. Yo, yo, look at this. See the blood. Blood is flowing on the street. 
That's different from saying, you know, you should work out more because your, car your blood pressure is a little high for your age. One's an urgent appeal. You're bleeding on the floor. We should do something to stop. Why don't you exercise more to bring down your systolic blood pressure? <laughs> yeah, yeah, bring down your systolic blood pressure is not bad, but you're young. You don't have reputation yet. Most of the time, number seven is easier. Be an old guy like me. And you scare people with your reputation. And they may listen to you. Or not, as the case may be. So just one or two other things. Uh, the handout provides uh, somewhat more detail about that. Another way to uh, just um, give one or two quick concluding observations. First, it is always important to try to figure out who is mistaken about what in your employer, because the mistakes are one of the things that cause the problems to persist. You want persistent problem, not a little transient problem. A big problem that you could solve is a problem that appears and persists. Because then the need is going urgent. Because the pain is it's excruciating and it's continuing. So why is it continuing? There's a variety of reasons. And when you find out why the problem's not being solved, because someone's making a mistake, and you figure out what the mistake is, you've just got another critical piece of information that makes it more practical for you to take action, because now you know you're not making the mistake, that somebody else is. Of course, listen carefully. <sighs> you want to share experiences. You want to extract information from the widest collection of persons, including workmates, managers at your workplace. You're trying to mine your workplace for information. While you're doing that, you cannot appear to be young smart ass. It just doesn't work. Just no one's going to talk to you. So if you see a problem, don't say, well, I think I have a solution for that. You say, I wonder why that's always failing. One is an appropriate question to your age. The other one makes you sound like you think you're God's gift to humanity. And even if you are, you're smart enough not to tell the lesser lights that you are, lest they push you down the stairs. So listen carefully because you're going to learn a lot, especially from the older guy. Okay. Don't, careful, careful. I'll never come back if you looked at something wrong with the older guys. Us older guys haven't left the university yet. And we're going to give you the benefit of your experience, whether, our experience, whether you want it or not. This is the biggest problem that occurs when you're doing this, of the students who do it. Biggest problem, biggest, biggest problem. OK, you start looking for problems. You find one. You're so happy. You leap. Oh, I have a problem. I, have a, I must try to solve it. So you, you, you get your friends all together and say, OK, let's brainstorm and try to solve this. Wrong. Look, you're reacting. You're leaping to your point is to generate as many problems as you can, rank them by their degree of urgency and your interest in them, and then try to solve them. Because if you try to solve them too soon, you're so busy solving the first problem that popped into your head, the 14th problem would have made you an empire. And therefore, you're an idiot. Look, you know, recognize the human brain has this tendency to leap to action, especially amongst idiot males. <laughs> it was because in our evolutionary past, there was no reproductive advantage to being thoughtful and generating alternatives. You're walking through the forest, there's a tiger. I must now generate alternative ways that I could evade the tiger. <laughs> By the time you have the first alternative, the tiger is eating you alive. In the olden days, you ran like hell. This is not 1985 <laughs> or 42,000 BC either. It's 2013. And you need to generate alternatives, even if you've got to stop your brain from leaping to a solution. It takes discipline to do that, by the way, because your natural tendency is, OK, whoa, this is an interesting problem. How would I fix it? Stop thinking that and go to the next problem. So you are, it, it, and it is about discipline. It is about forcing your mind to move on. I, I have no magic way to do it. I have to tell you how important it is. And I have to tell you, 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 you know, if you really want a high career, if you really want to create a venture, 
We're a university. This is an intellectual endeavor. It requires mental discipline. It is hard work. I do not make, I'm, I never said easy about any of this stuff. But it is what men and women at a university should be prepared to do, to practice doing. It is certainly not easy. And this discipline thing is one of the more difficult things that you indeed have to do. But again and again, I've watched students end up like, they'll spend an entire year on a trivial problem because they couldn't stop thinking about it. It's like a goofy song in your head that like you can't get the song out of your head. It just goes on and on and on. You start humming it like a crazy person. Because yes, and you can't afford to do that. 